Listen. So this week in movies, there's an international film that popped up in the box office that's been doing numbers overseas called YOLO that's written, directed, and starring Ja Ling, who went through a 100-pound transformation for this role, giving Christian Bale a run for his money. But she's also one of the highest-grossing female directors who's broken records with her last movie and even with this one. And I think it's got this, like, rocky spirit to it where it's about them overcoming where they're at in life and really just trying to go the distance. So I was pretty surprised by it, and I would recommend it in theaters because it makes a lot of sense why people have been resonating with it. So let me explain. So the story follows Lei Ying, who begins the movie by napping on one side of the couch, only to turn over to the whopping other side of the couch, because she's so tired with life that just sitting gets her fatigued. That's why her family's always pushing her to help around with the store that they own, or to get her on the reality show that the cousin's helping with, about finding oneself, but Lei Ying just goes back to Lei Ying. A big reason life's been so tough for her is because college and work didn't work out the way she expected it to, but then she also finds out that her BFF and her BF have been BFFing, and she even has the gall to invite her to the wedding wedding to be the maid of honor because, you know, she got knocked up. This is why you don't trust your astrology friends. It's written in the stars. Now they've got her eating cotton candy for breakfast. She's down in more pints than Thor. They're even so goofy they had the SFX of her walking around sounding louder than this year's VFX winner. <laughs> Plus, the more that you meet of her family, the more that things start to make sense. Like, for starters, her grandma left her the inheritance, and both parents are alive or well. She's got a sister with a baby, but the wrong daddy. And the direction that they do for these family meals, I thought was pretty clever, because you can see them blocking the actors and having them wait for the right moment so that they can bring out the food so that they can get what they want from Lei Ying. Obviously, playing with her plates leads to a family food fight, and that has her family moving out, meaning that she gets her own apartment and even a brand new job. And that's where we meet who I think is one of the best characters in the movie, and that's her co-worker. She's got like the right balance of being nice and super awkward, but she's also the one who encourages her to post moments online and, and actually gives a pretty good reason for it. To her, it's not about the likes that you get, but the likes that you give, and that what you're really doing, what you're really sharing, is the joy of your own life and your own experiences to the world. <laughs> That's what then leads to her next big chapter, which is her bumping into the local gym coach who she thinks is trying to date her, when in reality, his only goal is to sell memberships. So now it's kind of played like a little bit of a rom-com where she's getting mixed signals from him and is thinking they might be an item, but he's more dense than a punching bag. But after a while of going to the gym, she ends up really connecting to the sport of boxing, which I thought was really cool. That's where they do these neat parallels between scenes, because Lane notices that at the gym, two people can duke it out and punch each other in the face, but at the end they still hug, whereas her and her sister literally flip tables and none of them did the dishes. So now she's even more interested in this gym life, has a little bit of a crush, but the problem that she still has is that she struggles with putting other people's happiness over her own. But after a while, things change. After a fight in the bathroom with her coach, a literal fight with her manager, she also decides to fight with her family after she finally decides to go on the reality show that the cousin has been pushing on her. Pretty much, the show has her go on stage as they're speaking through her through an earpiece while the judges judge her to see if she can get a job, but the show goes off the rails. It leads her to taking a fall the same way that her coach was taking falls for his boxing matches, which I thought was a very neat parallel, and that becomes a turning point of her finally trying to win at life. First off, they cleared the Rocky theme for the training montage, and that alone was impressive. But it is this really cool feat of editing, especially when you think about those motivational videos that people post up on YouTube covering their journeys. Man, this woman made hers into a major motion picture. It's this incredible edit where you see the results happen up on the big screen in real time. But later on, there's a second training montage when she actually signs up for the fight and the core strength at work went crazy. And I like the idea of saving this for later on in the movie since it is two hours and you get to see her grow as a person. So the main change that's happening is her learning to love herself and actually not rely on others. So when you get to that final fight, she's not even facing the opponent. She's overcoming her past self. Like in the final act, she's doing that badass walk out into the ring and she's walking alongside her older version. She's literally smiling and shooting the breeze with her flashback self. I mean, just the idea of being a movie director who's filming the older scenes knowing you still have a hundred pounds to go, that's dedication. So if you haven't seen the movie, go check it out because in terms of that final fight, it works because it doesn't do what most sports movies do. 
look, if we're being honest, it's because she had no chance. And that's why it works. She was a substitute going up against someone coming off of knockouts. Lang may have made the first punch, but she also got the first punch laid on. Like, she was taking such a beating that I almost went into the bathroom just to throw in a towel for her. But then, story-wise, it all makes sense. It's all a metaphor for what she faced. So just like in her life, she keeps her head low in the fight, and when she gets knocked out, she gets back up again. Chambawamba style. But the moment she does land a punch, this pro just socks and bops her into the ground. Like she gets hit so hard, the whole movie flashbacks between her eyes in case you walked in late. But it's at that lowest point where she gets the strength to move past all of the moments where she's been bruised, used, and abused. In the end, they announce a winner, and it's obviously not the one who's sitting, but she proved what she went there for. That it's not a cliche about finding a dude in the end or winning the gold, but it's knowing that the emotional journey is just as important as the physical one. That everyone needs an outlet to release themselves. And it's realizing that loving yourself is the best weight off your shoulders.